Hi, it's part two repair time here of this uh, compact IBM, well, the world's first IBM PC compatible machine. It's the compact portable, uh, dates from 1984, and I'll link in the video up here somewhere and down below at the end if you haven't seen it. Anyway, we were debugging this thing and we got down to the point where uh, the processor was actually reset. So we actually uh, traced the problem down to the basically the 8088 uh, processor was permanently in reset and the reset comes from the uh, 8284 uh, clock driver chip here. This is the main 14.31818 megahertz uh, clock that uh, is divided by this to give you the 4.77 uh, meg in here as well as other stuff and the reset comes from here and the reset pin, that one there, actually came from the power good signal from the power supply over here which is in the bottom of the case so that's what's stopping the processor from powering up the rails the 5 volt rail 12 volt rail seemed okay but apparently there is a power good signal coming from it was the second pin here on the uh, power supply connector it was coming from in here so let's get this uh, power supply board out and have a squeeze now uh, it uses just these, I had to take the uh, mains input uh, out here, that's actually welded, soldered shut actually, that thing, so it's probably just got a filter in it or something like that, um, hopefully no reefer caps that have blown up, but anyway, mains does get in, and uh, it does have these little clips here, which then can, the board can slide out, but it can only do that if you actually take off, not sure if you're going to be able to see it in there, right down the bottom there, in that corner, focus you bastard, there it is, this little metal um, springy clip that I had to undo, which uh, like it's like a locking pin or something like that, that locks the whole power supply in place. It's rather, you know, it's clever and nice, but bloody annoying. Anyway, <laughs> we should now be able to slide this supply out. These connectors, I can't damn well get them off. They're really hard, but anyway, that's the plan because everything else in this machine sort of slid out. Everything's designed to be modular in this machine, but they kind of like didn't implement it very well. Everything I tried to get out of this had some cludge to it, and it was clunky to get out, and oh, I didn't like it. Anyway, I'll get back to you. It does come out somehow. There we have it. There's our board still attached to the umbilicals, uh, but... Let's, at least we can uh, get in here and have a visual inspection because the first thing you want to do, well, first thing you want to do is smell it, of course, um, but visual inspection, make sure any of the uh, caps aren't fail because uh, tag tantalums like these ones here and these ones here, these are all tag tantalums down, oh, down here as well, absolutely famous for catching on fire. And one of them actually did when I switched this on. It blew up. I see the previous video for that, but not on this power supply, did it on the uh, disc controller card. But anyway, we've got electrolytic caps and they all look uh, really good. They've got the vents on top. None of those are bulging. Nothing fancy going on there at all. I mean, you know, it could be a uh, ripple thing or something like that. They could have uh, certainly dried out and have not uh, died yet, but... So they're Markham jobs. Uh, the orange ones, not sure. But the silver ones, are oh, Sprague, made in USA, they'll be fine. But no, of course, if you were uh, actually refurbishing this thing and you were serious about, uh, you know, having this thing uh, work for any sort of extended period of time, you would recap absolutely everything. All the electros, all the tag tantalums. And I didn't actually notice that before. Um, the silk screen would have been handy if they put it on the other side, but the silk screen's buried under here. Sure enough, that second pin is PG, or uh, power good. And that's the one that's low, it's active low, and that's what's causing our uh, processor uh, to reset. But there's other rails. I've only measured the plus five and plus 12, which are fine, but we've also got uh, minus five as well and minus 12, but they're not needed for the processor. But if the power supply, of course, has any uh, sort of you know, sensing stuff, and it likely does, uh, to check the power rail. So even if the negative 5 volt is uh, buggered, then it's going to just reset the processor, even though the processor doesn't need the negative 5 volts. So, you know, uh, better safe than sorry, I guess. It's just really annoying. I mean, we can override that. We could simply uh, lift the pin, the second pin on there, and power this thing up and see if it boots, I guess. There's the backside of the board there. It's a little bit crusty. 
So I'll get in there with some isopropyl and uh, clean that up. But, you know, you might look for uh, dry joints, uh, you know, thermal cracked joints, um, actually, you know, thermal expansion of the parts uh, as they power off and on over the years. And that can cause problems, particularly on, like, things like, you know, the uh, TO3 power transistors and stuff like that. So you want to get in there with a little uh, jeweler's loop or a microscope and just uh, inspect all those. And if you're wondering what I use to uh, have a look at things like this that I can't take over to, say, uh, my Mantis or my Tagano microscope, I just use my uh, Times 10 macro lens. This is an Opteca. This is what all my close-up shots that you see, I just uh, screw this on the front of my camera, and bingo, it gives me my close-up shots like that. But you can actually just hold this near it, and you can actually get, look, you can get, like, really good close-ups like that. It's, you know, it's it's really quite nice. Highly recommend it. And sure enough, you can see what looks like possibly a cracked joint there. That's like on the nut that holds the TO3 in place. And the other one up there looks like it's maybe something similar, but I actually measured those and they seem fine, but that could be a potential intermittent source. Uh, so you'd want to uh, resolder those as a minimum. So I just powered it back up, and of course the 5 and 12 volt rails work, but sure enough, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, pin number 5, or fifth one from the end, that's supposed to be uh, minus 5 volts, and minus 12 volts is not there either. So yeah, both negative rails gone ski, um, and that's why power good is not coming on. Rrr. So we have to look at the negative rails, and here's where it gets, like, really annoying. Um, they're in here! Um, so, and it's, like, just populated with all these physically tall and dense, uh, parts. These are probably the output, uh, filter caps for it. The LM338 uh, there, that is a positive voltage regulator, so that's almost certainly not, uh, the negative rail there, but yeah, um, little switching jobby in there, perhaps, for the, uh, negative rails. So, it's just really annoying from an access point of view, and as Always with Murphy, if you have a look, uh, the fifth pin down there, that's actually the negative 5 volts, which I'm trying to trace, and of course it doesn't go on the net bottom, does it? So you can't see where it's going to it. I can barely see down in there. Arrgh. So actually, before I muck around on the power supply, I thought I'd actually power this board up with the bench supply and then just uh, change the reset uh, pin. So I've got it hooked up to the uh, bench supply here. I'm only generating the uh, 5 volts and 12 volts. In fact, I probably don't even need to generate 12 volts. And by the looks of this, I've turned uh, it's on at the moment. The 12 volts is drawing nothing. So like the minus 5 and stuff like that is not really needed for just getting the processor and stuff like that working, I believe. Anyway, it is drawing drawing 1.6 amps here. And if I actually uh, reset it, put that to ground, 1.519 and switch it on, 1.577. So it draws a little bit more uh, power when it's uh, going. But anyway, let's measure some clocks, shall we? There's our reset pin. It's low. There's our clock pin. That's, uh, that'll be 4.77 megahertz. There it is. Yeah, no wackers. And uh, let's look at some bus activity, shall we? It's just randomly, yep. That looks like bus activity. Bus activity, more bus activity. Oh, whatever that pin is. Sorry, I can't remember all the pin outs off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, this looks like classic bus activity. So, it's certainly doing something. So, what I'm going to do now is plug in the... Uh, video card in here, because it shouldn't, uh, well, the video card might need the positive and negative rails. Um, anyway, let's just plug it in and see what's what. All right, there we go. I've plugged it in. Haven't hooked up monitor yet, but we're getting significantly more current draw. Look at that. The video card's drawing huge amounts. I mean, I, like, we're now four amps. Uh, that's just nuts. Drawing a lot more than the processor is, and we're drawing something on the 12 volts. And let's switch it on. And getting absolutely nothing on the video output there. So, zippity doo da. Okay, we're still getting bus activity there. That's uh, processor bus activity. 
So it's not like it's being loaded down or anything like that, but we're certainly getting nothing on the video out, but I don't have those other rails, so that could be it. Okay, I've got uh, minus five here, and minus five's drawing nothing. Zip. Okay, I got uh, minus 12 as well, so I've got all four rails there, just set them to nominal, like half amp, current limit, whatever. So, whoa, no, we've gone into current limit, negative rail there. Oh no, no, there we go, no, it's good. Maybe that was just a power on thing. So reset it, because I don't have a power on reset. So they're both drawing zero, negative five and negative 12, so, and I'm getting nothing on the video. So that's still not gonna help me. Even if I fix my main power supply, um, it's pointless because um, this thing, while the process is working, the video's not. So once again, like, as I said, uh, I'm not sure if you have to maybe set some jumpers or something to get a composite video out. Maybe I can check uh, some of the RGB uh, out here, perhaps. Okay, I have no idea which pin's what. Hello. That looks like a sink. That's definitely sinky. There we go. Yep. Oh, that's 50 hertz. Yeah, getting stuff. There you go. 18, 18 and a half kilohertz. That certainly looks like the horizontal. Okay, it looks like we are getting horizontal and vertical sync there. There we go, we're getting something in there. That looks maybe like some video data. Probably only one color, because um, th that's all you need when you boot up. You're probably just getting like a text, uh, you know, a monochrome, uh, like one color text image. So that sort of makes sense. So it looks like that works. So this, oh, I think this machine's working. Um, and if we actually hooked up the CRT, but I've got to put all the boards back in, I think, to get all the CRT working again, it'd be a mess to try and do that outside of the case, I think. So, yeah, that's a bit tricky. Wish I could get that damn composite working. And by the way, kids, don't try this at home. I'm a professional. Now, apparently, uh, dip switch five and six on the main board here, these actually set the uh, startup video mode, and it's currently set to uh, CGA 80 column mode. So that's interesting. I might try MDA, which is both of them off. So I will do that and repower. Okay, I'm getting the same horizontal and vertical there. So 18.5K, but that data does look significantly different. It was less populated before, but I'm still getting no composite output signal at all. Now here's something interesting. I was just playing around with measuring the signals again because I've got a uh, capture card, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I'm using the case of the uh, composite output connector here as ground, and I was using that uh, before to actually probe. But now if I actually probe these signals, let me just do a, a reset -y. Let's actually probe these signals again. Look at this. See how it's just dropping down there? It's got some 50 hertz crap, all sorts of stuff on there, right? Look at that, you see? And then it's just, it's just dropping down and down. And here's a sink, see? Look at that, it's just going down and down and down and down. Now, what, when you see a signal like that, and look, it's just rising up. When you see a signal like that, that's indicative that the ground is actually doing nothing. So if I disconnect the ground and measure that again, you'll see it's doing the same thing, right? So our ground is, why is that no longer grounded? Uh, Mueller, Mueller. So if I actually measure that, compared to what I know is a ground pin here, it, it's just not connected. It is not connected at all. That is like, what? What the? It, I, I swear it was before. That's why I used it. I would have measured it. It's actually been some quite some time since I shot this video because I just acquired a, um, a CGA uh, to v, VGA uh, converter card and I was just about to hook up all the signals. I was determining where the signals were and I, what? 
And sure enough, if I measure it, um, th this bracket and, of course, which is electrically connected uh, to the ground of the uh, composite connector and also to the shell of the uh, CGA output connector, then, uh, yeah, I'm getting, like, um, nothing. It's just, like, like 40, 50 megs, something like that, and then it sort of, like, goes open compared to ground. So I have no idea how I was measuring those signals before. It has been a couple of weeks, but, I, like... I don't know. Um, I uh, scratching my head. Anyway, um, uh, what I did is went and ordered a uh, CGA and EGA and YUV to a VGA converter, and this is actually uh, quite nice. It's got the VGA in, it's got uh, the uh, component in as well, and it should be able to do the CGA hopefully. Um, and if, and it's got a very came with a very nice little cable, which then I've uh, connected up to uh, pin headers. Here, so I can just slide these on. I've got to uh, find which pins is what again. I know that that one's ground, as in 5 volt ground. I've buzzed that one out. Um, so I'll just uh, remeasure that now using that as the ground pin. And uh, anyway, yeah, we'll get these signals and we'll see if we can get a uh, CGA output signal from this thing. Actually, it's really quite frustrating that there's no really easy ground points on this thing that you can just hook your scope probe up to um you know without danger of you know you can go on to maybe one of the pins of a tag tent or something like that you know that's why um you know you generally like pick a uh, a ground connector like a, a you know a, a bracket like that so when you're designing boards like this just make sure you include like a, a nice handy ground reference loop or pin or something Urgh. unfortunately i'm getting zippity doodah on this no signal um so I've got to muck around with this thing, but the menu, um, yeah, I can't make heads or tails out of that. I might need a cheat sheet, so we'll see. Um, there is an auto button. Maybe I can press and hold auto or something. I don't know. I am getting, I'm getting horizontal sync, vertical sync, and I'm getting something on the green signal. So, yeah, I don't know. There's some adjustment pots in there, maybe. Bugger, I just read the manual for this thing, um, or the specs on eBay or whatever, and it tells me that it's only 14.5 kilohertz to 16.5 kilohertz. We've got 18.5 kilohertz here. Don't! Oh! Winner, winner, chicken dinner, green screen, and all. I had to change the mode of the board to RGBS, um, and that worked a treat. So there it is. Um, I don't know what these error codes. I assume they're error codes 301, 401, 601. Um, I, you know, we've got nothing in course as diskette error. But this thing works. There you go. It boots. Woohoo! Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Um, well, as you'd expect, because we were seeing video signals there. So, yeah, no worries. But hold on to your hat. If I use the ground down on this board and I probe our composite output, we now have a signal. Why weren't we getting a composite signal before? Look at that. That is going to work a treat. So if I <laughs> hook this monitor back up to the composite out, I have no doubt that'll work. What the? Whoa, glitch in the matrix there. So I'll just change this back to AV here. And let's see if we, oh, oh yeah, it's not as good, is it? It really doesn't like that. Ugh, that's yucky. Yucky, yucky. Um, so, yeah, modern monitors, they're probably not very good at this sort of thing. Meh, who knows? But, uh, yeah, that's working. A treat. And as we uh, saw before, it doesn't take any power on the uh, minus 5 and minus 12 volt rails. So, really, to get this thing to boot, um, I don't even need to fix that power supply uh, in this thing. All I need to do is force that or break into that line, force it uh, high, and that power good line, force it high, and assuming that all the CRT circuitry and everything works, it'll, it should just work a treat, or at least the composite output will work, and we'll be able to see that. At least we can read it, I guess. Okay, I think the reason that the composite is working now is because I have been mucking around with these dip switch settings, and I, which changes the graphics modes, and I think there's only one that seems to work. Oh, okay. It just takes some time to boot. Let me uh, let me show you that. Go like that, and there's no composite output for quite some time. Time this puppy. 
come on, you can do it. And it will eventually get there, I believe, or it did last time. So, come on. So maybe I was a bit too impatient before about checking for video signals. There we go. Yeah, it eventually just pops up. Yep. So, maybe, you know, it's going through memory checks or something like that before it... Uh, displays any before it even enables like the video signal is not even enabled um, until literally the text uh, pops up so there's no sync there there's no nothing okay i've confirmed that the only mode that actually seems to work is dip switch uh five off and six on which is i believe a cga 40 column mode and that's the only one that will give me the composite output and work with this uh, CGA to VGA converter card as well. So anyway, I'm going to leave it set to that. So that at least gives me a baseline to get this uh, puppy up and running from now on. But uh, really, I didn't have any doubt that uh, the board would have worked because I found with these vintage computers, like uh, just you know, when you're talking about like TTL stuff, unless you have an exploded uh, tantalum cap like we had in the first uh, video, something like that, really the you know the the silicon's actually quite robust, and you know even after all this time, the uh, mask ROM uh, still works. You know that's all just fine, and everything's hunky. The RAM in it still works, and everything's hunky dory. So um, yeah, I might have to look at i'll look up those codes but anyway like the thing works the processor works everything all the video card works and yeah everything's sweet so no real surprise i knew oh, i was pretty confident you know i was like 90 percent confident when i get this board out and power it up from bench supply it'll probably boot and sure enough so there you go, I'm going to leave this video at that because I've run out of time today. I will do the uh, power supply troubleshooting another day, but we at least got this puppy up and running using the uh, external um, the monitor output here. And I have checked, there are signals on the CGA monitor, uh, CGA connector as well. So I should be able to, you know, if I assemble the thing and the CRT doesn't work and I can't get that working or I don't want to get it working, I can at least hook on um, an external monitor without having to, you know, hack into the internal uh, header connector here. But there you go. I hope you like that. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got so two more unknowns as well. I definitely know the power supply is faulty, so I need to fix the uh, power supply. But as I said, like the minus 5 volt and minus 12 volt rails on here draw absolutely nothing. So in terms of getting this thing working, um, unless you want to use like a serial port or something like that, maybe where it might use that, um, those voltages, I didn't, you know, or the disk drives and stuff like that, uh, possibly, and also the CRT. As well they may only be for the crt so you know who knows but uh yeah so to get the so probably to test the crt i reckon i'm probably going to need to fix the power supply first so that needs to be the next step and then uh check to see if the crt works and get this whole thing uh restored eventually it's one of those time things anyway that's it for today so if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up as always discussed down below catch you next time